paper is of Dr. Ina Chen. And the title of the talk is Assessment of Degenerative Joint Disease with uh, Sodium Fluoride. Um, and the talk is uh, from uh, uh, Penn. For decades, the traditional bone scan was the standard imaging modality for detecting metastasis and other skeletal diseases. However, since then, sodium fluoride PET has gained popularity um, and it, it gives uh, improved results such as better contrast and its ability to join with CT to create fused images for direct comparison. There are many advantages of sodium fluoride PET over the traditional bone scan, such as a higher sensitivity, better spatial resolution, and faster clearance from blood. However, another major advantage of sodium fluoride PET over the traditional bone scan is its ability to quantify the levels of tracer uptake, which, is, which plays an important role in our study today. That being said, a major limitation of sodium fluoride PET is its low specificity, and this is a characteristic of all bone scans. And this low non-specificity uh, has improved sodium fluoride PET, but still remains an issue, and this is due to a variety of causes, but a main contributor is degenerative changes in the bone. To further explain, uh, the most common indication for sodium fluoride PET is metastasis. However, most com more commonly, what we get on the findings is degenerative bone changes. And this problem is essentially universal for older patients, especially because they will more or less be present with at least some degree of arthritis in their joints. This poses a problem for nuclear medicine physicians when interpreting the image because they must decide whether an area of increased tracer uptake is due to, say, a malignant bone metastasis or just a benign etiology such as DJD. And these images would be a lot easier to read without the interference of DJD activity. However, our group decided to look at this issue from a different perspective and to see if this troubling DJD activity, which is currently regarded as extraneous information, seeing if we can look at it from the perspective of treating osteoarthritis and seeing if there's a correlation there. So a little bit about degenerative joint disease. It is currently the world's most prevalent joint disease, affecting more than 27 million in just America. And it is characterized by the loss of articular cartilage, subchondral bone formation, and osteophyte <coughs> formation. And it technically, it normally affects uh, senior citizens. Present methods of monitoring DJD progression, however, are lacking in specificity and sensitivity. Uh, current imaging modalities such as X-ray, CT, and MRI are all structural imaging modalities which doesn't exactly correlate very well with the fundamental uh, characteristics of DJD which is characterized by constant bone remodeling. And in addition, the cost of these procedures increase with complexity. <coughs> PET, on the other hand, provides a promising alternative in that it is able to elucidate the processes underlying the degeneration process and we believe that static PET, although yet to be evalu evaluated in regards to DJD, may give us a more practical and less time-consuming alternative. So the purpose of the study was then to evaluate the association, if there is one, between arthritis severity and the quantification of tracer uptake on the scans using PET's volumetric parameters. As for our procedure, patient data was collected retrospectively with IRB approval from the Philadelphia VA Medical Center and the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, each patient was a male with a history of prostate cancer. However, the scans we selected had showed very little signs, uh, little to no signs of metastases. Uh, each patient was ranged from 60 to 86 years old, and a total of 11 patients were selected as having signs of degeneration. In their joints. As for image analysis, we used an adapted thresholding algorithm called ROVER to delineate and quantify areas of sodium fluoride uptake in regions of interest, ROI. And for values provided, uh, ROVER gave us SUV max, SUV mean, metabolically active volumes, or MAV, which is a volumetric uh, measurement. TLA, or total lesion activity, which is the product of SUV mean and MAV, and then partial volume corrected PVC 
SUV Me, and PBC TLA. Uh, global uptake value calculations were done by summing the MAVs of each patient, the TLAs and the PBC TLAs, taking the maximum SUV max and averaging all the SUV means and PBC SUV means, V means of all the joints. And lastly, as a Clinical comparison, as a basis of comparison, we had arthritis severity scored by an experienced radiologist for each scan on a scale from one to three, one being mild and three being severe. And this was used for subsequent correlational analysis. So these are our results. The uh, patients were observed with a range of degeneration and the first six columns represent the six quantification values provided by Rover and the last column to the right is the clinical score. Correlational analysis was done by GraphPad Prism and here we see that not all six quantification values from Rover were had a correlation with arthritis severity such as SUV max, SUV mean, and PVC SUV mean. However, TLA and PVC TLA were found to be very significant with p-values of 0.0082 and 0.0024 respectively and R-squared values of 0.559 and 0.6583 respectively. It is also interesting to note that MAV was found to be almost significant with a p-value of 0.0784 and an R-squared value of 0.3045 and we believe that with a larger sample size this correlation may have been strengthened. Our findings can be further illustrated with the following graphs. As you can see, the SUV max, SUV mean, and PVC SUV mean show uh, very no correlation at all. Um, the x-axis is the clinical score as a basis of comparison, and the y-axis is each quantification value, and each data point represents, of course, one pa patient. Uh, PVC TLA had the strongest correlation, followed by TLA, and lastly, MAV, which was almost significant. So this study was successfully able to apply novel quantification methods to patients with varying levels of DJD severity. And although we found that SUV max, SUV mean, and PVC SUV mean had no correlation, uh, TLA and PVC TLA had significant correlation, while MAV was almost significant. Uh, all in all, this pilot study was the first to quantify uh, sodium fluoride global uptake in peripheral joints and our study suggests that sodium fluoride could be a future biomarker for degenerative joint disease and that TLA and PVC and TLA could be used in the future as indicators of disease severity. Our largest limitation of the study of course is its small sample size of only 11 patients. Uh, so uh, as for future directions, we hope that sodium fluoride can be further examined as a tracer in other types of arthritis and we could do comparisons with other imaging modalities as well. Uh, we have here are some other uh, posters regarding degenerative joint disease done by fellow members of our group. And lastly, I would like to take the time to thank Dr. Alabi for giving me the opportunity this summer to intern at his lab. It was, it was truly an honor and a great learning experience. And I would like to thank as well uh, the fellow members of our group, uh, William, Tom, Sina, and Saeed, for their continuous help and support throughout this project. Thank you all for listening.